Hello and look at us with the natural light today. Got a bit of sunlight coming in, that's nice. So today, the Chimera 7 from iFlight, which I fitted my walks now to. Want to take this out again because I really didn't do much um, on the, testing these uh, these new V2 VTXs because if you saw the last video, I had a problem. I had a problem with the firmware on, I think it was one of the four threes. And basically this thing cut out and crashed into the field and I didn't get really much of a fly around. So I wanted to fly it around and I thought, you know what, we need some proper batteries for it. Previously I was using two 1056s connected in um, parallel and that didn't really work. So what I did, I ordered from my friend Gaff over at your FPV, two of these iFlight Full Send 4000 milliamp hour batteries. They use 21700 cells, so they are lithium iron so we can go down to a much lower voltage. I think 2.5 is the ultra low you can go. Well, it doesn't work as well when the sun goes in, does it? Obviously you can't pull massive amounts of amps through them, but this is a cruising quad, so I want to see how long this would last. So I've got two of those, and uh, Gaff also very kindly sent over for me to try out this uh, Dogcom 4000 milliamp hour battery. This is labeled as a LiPo battery, but again, you could see the curve of these cells, and this, these seem to be 21700 cells again. Uh, we also got, again thanks to Gaff, this China Hobby 1200 uh, 6S battery, so we can try that out as well. Um, and what I'm intending to do is basically, just to get my confidence up to make sure there's nothing wrong, is pop one of these on and fly round and round in circles using a, you know, a cruising throttle and see how long it can go for, and that way I can compare the two, and on my last one of those I can go for a bit more of a fly. So the thing that was holding me back on this is I didn't want to use a nightly of 44 two I, I tried it out and it seemed fine and it cured the problems but i waited until the official version came along which it has so i updated that i used most of my settings so i don't know how it's going to fly i mean i've hovered it in the garden it seems all right but i don't know if it's perfectly not like twitch or anything and what i noticed is there was also a beta out for the walks now firmware called 34.40.15 i updated the goggles that was no problem and then i came to update this and the vtx didn't power on i was like What's happened now? I've barely used it. I mean, yeah, it had a little crash one time, but it, it seemed okay. What's going on? I couldn't figure it out, so eventually I had to remove it and swap it for this one. This is actually the one with the, the basic V2 camera, not the Pro camera. Um, and I thought, I'll have to take it apart and, and see what I can do. And I had a slight suspicion about this connector here, and I thought, what I'll do after I strip it down is I can try soldering on here directly. And it was just whilst I, I had the top off and everything and I was about to do it and I thought, oh, maybe I should test with a multimeter to see if those points are the same. And when I was looking in to look at the pins, I noticed the VCC pin wasn't where it should have been. It looked like the plug had been plugged in, the pin wasn't quite aligned and it had folded into the side um, and obviously wasn't connecting. So that's why it wasn't powering on. So what I managed to do with a pair of tweezers is very, very gently sort of squeeze that out and straighten the pin out and then I've plugged it in and it's back to normal. So the Pro camera and VTX is here because I can't be bothered to swap it round. Um, it's not easy to swap this out. I have to bring like the motors out and, and pass everything through and take it half apart and now I can't be bothered. So I'm going to fly on the old one. But yeah, be careful of those pins. They're a bit delicate it would seem because I can't remember having any problems plugging it in. Uh, but yeah, careful. Anyway, with with the regular one installed on this, I upgraded the firmware and one other thing I noticed is my fonts weren't there. And there is this update, so what it will do is when it's like warning, it has different colours to indicate things. I, I found it out when I plugged in a battery that wasn't charged and there was loads of red text everywhere. And that might be because there's now like four sets of colours in the single font. If you look at this picture side by side, you'll see that the, the up-to-date font has got like four options and the previous one has just got one. I don't know if it looks at it and says this is wrong or, or what, or the font I and I stuff's changed, but I did notice that the people that were creating these fonts haven't sort of updated them to um, have the four colours in now. So I'm just going to fly with the regular um, walks now font it gives me for now until I figure out what's happening there. But anyway, let's go to the field and check it out. Well hello, here we are, we've got the Chimera, we've got the full sound battery all ready to go. Although almost, 
I had to turn around. Originally I was going to come yesterday because it said the weather was going to be good and then it looked pretty overcast and windy and the weather forecast looked good for the day so I came today and I got here and it, the heavens opened and it's rained. And I was going to get back in the car but over there looks reasonable but as we turn around it gets worse. I can just feel spots of rain coming down right now. Uh, I, I don't know. Maybe we'll get lucky, maybe we won't. Anyway, the idea is we're just going to uh, fly around with this battery around this ploughed field mainly and see how it is uh, see how long we can stay in the air and try it again with the dog on if it's not going to rain on us which at the moment we've just got some spitting oh man now I'm going to speed this up in a second but I thought I'd just talk you through the first part of the video because first off I had this thing sat on the ground for a good sort of five ten minutes and I couldn't seem to get more than five satellites and I thought to myself you know what um, I don't care about having rescue mode. I'm just going to fly round and round this field. So, you know, I'm quite in control of where the quad might go down if it goes down. And of course, it shouldn't go down because we're talking something, you know, 300 metres away uh, at the very longest. And we're just going around. However, there were portions of this where you see the LQ really dip. And I think it's a combination of perhaps these houses close to me and the way the antenna can get blocked. I mean, we got down there to an LQ of 32, I think was the lowest, which is pretty bad. So at some point in this, I start flying a bit higher to help that out. Uh, but let's speed this up and we can come back and talk about it. Okay, so this is 2000% normal speed and you can see it's still getting into it's and bits of bother on the LQ, but uh, it seems to be doing okay. I'm only doing somewhere between 25 and 30% throttle. And this would be kind of my, my general cruising throttle rate for sort of slow cruising, but also it lets me uh, easily repeat it with the next battery. And we're sort of flying along okay, but what I didn't do is, is set up my quad to say, hey, I'm gonna be flying longer so now we've got the, the time thing going off and of course I didn't say this is not a LiPo battery so as soon as we hit 3.5 volts we start getting a low battery indication which is not really what we're after. Now it was all going okay I mean I was a bit bored but it was going fine my intention was to fly down to 3 volts because that seems like a safe margin when you can fly down to uh, 2.5 uh, but something went horribly wrong. You see the satellite count finally came up, but as I fly along here, the quad just seemed to completely fall out of the sky, completely unexplained. At the time, I thought like, oh, it must be a low signal. It's dropped out of it. So I didn't think anything was particularly wrong. I thought it must just be a low signal problem. Well, that was pretty weird. I'm not quite sure what happened there. I have to look back at the DVR. Obviously, you could see I was getting some pretty bad link quality going around there, uh, which is why I sort of brought it up a bit. But it did go down next to houses over there, which might be the problem. Um, I've just tested it and uh, it sort of, it comes up, it's fine, it hovers. Um, so I don't think there's anything wrong. I don't like the way this antenna is uh, in there. It, it sort of doesn't come out all the way. So I've done two things for the next battery test and we'll obviously have to take the data from 3.3. I was going to go down to 3 volts knowing that you could go down to 2.5 as a minimum and 3 is sort of the safety zone. I'm going to fly this direction instead which contains less houses although slightly more cows and uh, we'll see how that goes with the dog con battery. Obviously <laughs> I need to be able to trust this not to fall out of the sky. Um, my best guess that was a loss of signal and obviously I did not have rescue mode enabled there because uh, you know I took off with five satellites so let's try it again with the dog com and keep our fingers crossed and see what happens okay taking off this time we've got satellites and the only thing that I really wanted the satellites for was to give me a cumulative distance you'll see up the top center there we've got the the first figure is how far we are away from home and the second figure is our complete flight distance. The reason I thought this was useful is because, you know, you can talk about how long you can stay in the air, but it, it it's kind of how far can you go? And like, if you go a certain way, can you get back again? So I wanted to get kind of a, a range idea from this as well. Uh, you'll notice the last battery we did just over 17 minutes before it hit about 3.3 volts, leading me to think we should get at least 20 minutes um, if we go down to three volts, but 
potentially more if we go down all the way. So this one, I'm, I'm basically looking to fly to 3.3 volts and see what happens. I'm obviously keeping a, a very close eye on all the stats I can see there, especially the, the LQ and RSSI. At the time, I didn't know that the the LQ and RSSI were perfectly fine when it went down. I thought it, it was a problem there. So I'm watching it, but that obviously wasn't a problem. So having speeded through that flight very rapidly, we're actually coming out very, very similar. Um, I've had 1S Dogcom batteries before and they did not perform, but this one is performing, I think, very, very similar to the, the full send battery, which is pretty good. I'd like to have gone down all the way, but it's, it's not really a fair test then. So from uh, my memory, at least, coming down to about 3.3 volts, the Dogcom performed exactly the same as the, the full sand iFlight battery, which is pretty impressive. Of course, I only took that down to 3.3. My original intention was to take them down to 3 as the safety zone. They could go to 2.5 a stretch. Um, but that was still like 17 minutes. So we're talking, I think, at least 20 minutes on these batteries on this big old quad. And that time the quad didn't crash, which was a lot better. I'm very suspicious about this antenna. I think it's it's getting blocked maybe we need to put something else in there but i've got one more battery left and something i haven't checked out on this ever is rescue mode so before doing any <laughs> proper flights i really need to check that rescue mode comes home and then we will maybe have a bit of a fly around see how it goes now we had tried rescue before on the original 49 firmware when this was an analog and everything was perfectly fine i put my normal rescue settings on and that worked brilliantly and i've replicated those exactly here and so all i want to do is go on beyond 200 meters, flick uh, rescue test, make sure it's coming back to me and when it gets a little bit closer, my idea is to turn it back off and then fly it normally. However, I put it in rescue mode, it goes up, it turns, all good so far, and then it seems to lose power and drop to the earth, which is not great. Thinking I'd made a mistake and messed around with the switches or something, I tried this again at a higher altitude. Unfortunately, it didn't come out on DVR. And this literally tumbled straight out of the sky again. So rescue mode not working at all now. Well, that was a little frustrating. The first time I thought, oh, it's going and then it went down. Maybe maybe I touched the throttle. Can I, can I, do I have manual control of the throttle and rescue? I can't remember. So I tried it again making sure my throttle was about 50% and the thing just span out. So uh, yeah, I mean, that's why we test these things. I'd much prefer to have it go down in a field that I can get to than be several kilometers out over the sea, hit rescue and it just dive into the ocean. So yeah, I have to check that out in a bit more detail, try and figure out what's going on there. Meantime, the Poro Chimera is a little bit dusty now, but um, none the worse for wear, fortunately. So we'll come back and, and check that out a bit more. Well, there's uh, almost three videos here because we're talking about different things. And one thing I forgot to mention about Walksnow is um, if you try and use the regular Walksnow OSD tool for rendering your uh, video with OSD over the top, if you use the current version that's released, um, it doesn't understand the new font with four colors. And if you use a regular one, whenever it needs a different color, it will cut that off. So what I had to do is compile that code from source because the the latest version that hasn't been released yet will work with it uh so that's just a, a little tip there hopefully we'll see these these other types of fonts coming out with all the other colors so we've got a bit more of a range the other thing lipos which is or, or lie ion batteries which is what i went to test in the first place the crashes aside these work pretty well um I was quite impressed with the dogcom the dogcom still says it's lipo but bearing in mind it's got the curve of the cells and it was almost identical to the uh, full send. I think it's a Lion pack as well, and I think they're the 21700 cells. These were really nice. Uh, so definitely check that out and have a look at uh, your FPV, especially if you're in the UK, because you'll get them quick. Uh, and obviously I want to go out and, and test these out again. As far as this guy goes, oh, it's becoming a little bit of a problem quad, isn't it? It keeps falling out of the sky and stuff. Um, the, the first thing I did, I, I had a quick word with um, iFly, just, just to try and sound them out. Anybody got any of this sort of thing? And, and their sort of advice was no. But at the moment, iFly, they were quite outspoken about it. They're still not recommending people using 4.4 on, on their systems. They said in a, a post about them getting failures in rescue mode, which is uh, ironically what I had, but they hadn't had anything about it falling out of the sky. 
uh, and I went back and checked black box and then I found out I had empty logs because I put black box on the switch and I didn't initiate the switch to try and find out what was going on there. I think the best thing for me in order to try and work out what's going on, is it a 442 problem or is it a quad problem, is as I mentioned, when I first had this, it was on 49 on an analog system and I did some flying there. I flew to a greater distance. I tested GPS rescue, it was all fine. I will get the factory defaults for this quad uh, on 49 and reapply it. The only reason I upgraded in the first place was to use the HD fonts uh, and use all the screen. What happens is instead of having the full widescreen, your, your OSD is in this bit in the middle and looks a bit silly. but if I can put that back and go and charge these up again and basically try and recreate the thing. So if I fly around and around in the field for as long as possible for several batteries and I don't get a failure, then that's probably okay. And if rescue mode works, then it's probably okay. And then we just wait until 4.5 is released and iFlight come out with their presets for that. I don't know quite what's so special about the iFlight flight controllers that they don't just work with 4.4 like everything else seems to be, but that seems to be what they're saying. Uh, long term as well, because I don't trust this antenna. You can sign and see how this can sort of disappear. And yeah, I could put stuff in to, to sort of stop it doing that so. But I figured what I might do long term is take this BDRF PV uh, True Diversity antenna and then I've got a lot more antenna to play with about mounting it and I can mount one horizontally, one vertically or just space them out a bit better so we're not going to be blocked by the huge amounts of carbon that's in a big frame like this one. Anyway, battery's good, quite a bit of a problem, but uh, let's try it again and see what happens, see if we can get to the bottom of this. Anyway, hope that review's been helpful. It's mostly reviewed these, but a lot of looking at my quad crash, and I will catch you next video. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing, and if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.